During the spring of 1988, Rajanine Golem was born into a large family in the southern part of Antwerp, Belgium's cosmopolitan city. Struggle soon found him. Abandoned by his father as a baby, it was his mother Lizzie tasked with the job of raising he and his four siblings to a backdrop of the tough, working-class neighbourhood of Kiel. Half Flemish and half Indonesian, Raja was exposed to one of the nation's most culturally diverse districts, with a rich history of immigration, and the streets were packed with kids like him, in need of a hobby. He and his twin sister Rihanna developed a fondness for football, which by the age of five took them to local side to Banshia Burgerhort and then germinal beer shot of the Pro League. Held in high esteem when it comes to discovering talent, the now dissolved club had a record to boast of, and they saw something special in the pre-teen, nurturing his raw gifts in the youth team for over half a decade, a period in which he realised football was his future. Seeing it as an escape route from poverty for his family, his drive attracted the gaze of Alessandro Beltrami, an Italian agent who found him a new home in the Emilia-Romagna region as a prodigy of Piacenza. Off the jump, his quality was no mystery, and the Belgian became one of Stefano Pioli's undroppables as Piacenza fought to stay in Serie B. From midfield, he was able to influence the game at both ends of the pitch as a box-to-box -box player with tenacity and endurance, working hard all year to help Ibianco Rossi avoid demotion with seven goal contributions. A breakthrough year had earned a pair of promotions for the Antwerp native, firstly from the Belgian under-21s to the first team, collecting a first cap that May and then made the leap to Serie A, joining Cagliari on loan in the new year. For him, it was a rocky road to settling in Sardinia. Featuring for seven minutes across three weeks, he was trying to prove his worth, which wasn't helped by his third appearance, seeing Yellow twice inside two minutes to be sent off in a loss to Chievo. This jotted him at the top of Massimiliano Allegri's bad books, so when he was sacked, it gave the Belgian a fresh shot, and under Pierpaolo Bissoli now, he took it. From bench warmer to team sheet regular, Raja's never say die mentality and reliability on the back foot ticked all of Bissoli's boxes, and he became an undisputed first choice of the 11. Despite smashing away his first two top flight goals to flaunt his forte in long shots, his role in Rosso Blue was a defensive one, relied on for recovering possession and redistributing it with his keen eye for a pass. Soon enough, a permanent contract was offered to the number four, and feeling at home on the island of Sardinia, he inked his name without hesitation. Firmly established in a European top flight team by 22 years of age, Raj's boyhood dream was realized, and there were no barriers to impede his ascent. Painfully, 2010 was also the year he lost his idol, with his mother's passing coming amidst this special stint. The past was, was not easy, coming out of it, it's uh, only because of her. Yeah, the only thing I can say is um, to say thank you, thank, uh, the only thing I can say is thank you to her because she made my dream come true and yeah. Mm. Marking his skin forever with a pair of angel wings tattooed on his back, underlined with the date of her lifespan, it was a tribute to her memory. Now dubbed Il Ninja, the Sardinians had fallen for the Belgian, whose dogged on-pitch determination and feisty attitude gave a noticeable boost to Cagliari. What stood out during these seasons in red and blue was his fearlessness, refusing to ever back down from a challenge or throw in the towel when the going gets tough. The mohawked midfielder had a mindset that cannot be taught. He was of a rare calibre, built like a bulldog he stood only at 5'9", but was broad and strong, diving headfirst into every challenge with very little care for his own safety, let alone that of his opposition. He bled for the club, with his heart on his sleeve, and was now an undeniable attraction to the coaches of Italy's juggernauts. 
It can be hard for a defensive player to stand out, particularly in Italy, but the Belgian managed to, involved in more matches and winning more tackles than anyone else in the whole division across those three years. By January of 2014, the demand for the Ninja had reached an all-time high, with offers flying his way from Milan, Southampton and Juventus, but Raja had bad news for them as he instead favoured Rudy Garcia's Roma. Having only lost one of their 18 games so far, La Lupa were the underdogs of the title race, and that appealed to him far more than the security of a transfer to the champions. Debuting in the capital in a 4-0 dismantling of Genoa, throughout which he'd completed over 100 passes, the Girarossi colours suited him, and with a first goal coming only a few weeks later, this was a match made in heaven. The Roman grandeur and higher stakes only further fueled his inner flame, throwing himself around to regain possession and covering crazy distances week by week to chase down the old lady for the crown. Burying the sole goal in Florence, they left the Artimo Franchi with enough points to guarantee a Champions League place for the first time in four years, yet with a record-shattering 102 points total, Conte's Juve made it a three-peat. Nonetheless, Nangolan's impact was unmistakable, demonstrating his versatility in every facet of the game. So it puzzled all when Marc Vilmots ignored him for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Even for the most headstrong, this couldn't have been easy to accept, but the unwanted feeling didn't last because back in the Eternal City, its Romanisti had already decided to deify him. Adding the finishing touch to a well-balanced team, he slotted in beside the passmaster Miralem Pjanic, ahead of the tough vice-captain Daniele De Rossi in a diamond completed by their skipper, Francesco Totti, who linked the midfield to a pacey attacking duo of Juvinho and Juan Iturbe. Still deployed in the defensive Mezzala role, the Belgian continued to excel in breaking up attacks with his signature hooked slide tackles but was just as good in possession, and thus Garcia encouraged him to get forward as well and help counter. Hovering around the box, Mangolan found space with ease and on five different occasions made the net ripple. He had the aptitude for scoring, but was working on his appetite. That came with the arrival of Luciano Spalletti in January of 2016. Repurposing him from a defensive player to an attacking one, he suddenly became a makeshift fantasista and after a goalless first half to the season, the Belgian second was far more fruitful. Supporting the duo of Edin Dzeko and a 24-year-old Mohamed Salah, he was completely reinvigorated, thriving in his advanced role as the goals kept coming. His record wasn't without its demerits, picking up a reputation for allowing his passion to boil over which made him a regular of the referee's book. Though this rash attitude only served to deepen the Ultras' reverence for their maverick, whose contributions made him unignorable this time for the Belgium selectors. Not only was there a seat on the plane to France, but a starting spot for their opener against Glee at Zuri, which raised questions, not about him, about the whole team. This group was Belgium's golden generation, and going into the tournament, they were seen as one of the favourites, so a toothless 2-0 defeat to Italy drew criticism. A follow-up whitewash of the Irish put them back on track, and then thanks to a 9 golden screamer against Sweden, Belgium qualified for the knockouts. They brought Hungary's unbeaten run to an end in some style ahead of their quarter-final with Wales, another that they trumped on paper 10 times out of 11, and when he broke the deadlock 13 minutes in, with an absolute belter, the match's script was predictable enough. In the end though, it was heart over talent that decided the outcome. Disappointed, but not one to dwell in self-pity, Nangolan returned to Spalletti ready for war, eager above all to disrupt Juve's monopoly. With Pjanic now a Bianconero, the redefined Raja was permanently occupying the zone in front of the midfield, where his sight of goal was clearer, and after a slow start, he embarked on his most prolific year to date. 
Described by his coach as Roma's Superman, Nainggolan was his same tenacious self, just higher up, shrinking the pitch for back lines with his persistent pressing and crunching tackles. Spalletti's shrewdness was in the decision to put a hard worker in the sport's laziest position, so Roma were tough to beat because just as you begin to build up, all of a sudden, Il Ninja would pounce. And by this point, it was understood that he didn't need to be close to goal, nor for the odds to be on his side to beat the keeper. Striking the ball so purely, he had an incredible knack for finding the unreachable corners of the net, and into 2017, he reached new heights in the red and yellow. In February, he shared five goals across four consecutive games, smashing home an outstanding brace to silence the San Siro. Maybe the most personally rewarding strike of all was his mid-May rifle against Juve to seal a victory over the one team he truly hates. This was the closest they'd been to reigning on the black and white parade. So believing he'd done all in his power, Spalletti headed north to coach the Nerazzurri. The retirement of Totti, sale of Salah, and introduction of Eusebio Di Francesco as manager suggested this may be a campaign to forget. 1718 was amongst Roma's most memorable years of all. The Champions League is an arena where the Gilarossi had much to prove, which was achieved in the second leg of the quarter-final against Barcelona. Messi and co had made light work of a nine less Roma under the Camp Nou lights, but back at the Olimpico with the Belgian's hamstring recovered, the Italians made history. An away goal in Catalonia and the roar of the Romanisti was enough to inspire them to a 3-0 comeback, completed by the head of Costas Manolas. Four four got them to a first ever UCL semi final, where they were haunted by the Egyptian winger, who now in Liverpool red was putting the cherry atop one hell of a campaign. Down seven four on aggregate, the unwavering grit of the midfielder shone through with two very late consolation home goals to narrow the gap, epitomising the fighting spirit he's carried since day one. Nine Golan was at the peak of his powers here still punting some outrageous efforts into the net and threading assists through to Dzeko with the perfect weight and precision. No one could argue his place next to the likes of Paul Pogba as a deluxe box-to-box -box midfielder, especially given the stats. Between 2015 and 18, he created the most chances and won more tackles than any other Serie A or Champions League player. So that summer, fans were highly anticipating him in Russia for his first World Cup. This time, it was Roberto Martinez to deliver the heartbreak. In the case of Raja, we all know that he's got a very, very important role in his club level, and I don't feel that we can give him that in the national team. And justifying it as a tactical choice, but it seemed more a personal one. Because I was like a bad boy for him. Because, yeah, okay, I like to party, I like to drink, but I was always on the pitch. With what he called pathetic reasoning, the 30-year-old wiped his hands with Belgium. That is something I never will understand because there's no player playing the, the semi-finals of Champions League that will not go to the national team. So I said to myself, OK, now it's time to quit. And in 2018, I, I quitted with the national team. To balance their books and comply with FFP rulings, Roma offloaded over 100 million euros in players, included in which was their ninja, whose wages were now out of budget. So after four years, Nangolan left the capital to reunite with Spalletti at Inter Milan. Rumoured links to Conte's Chelsea were silenced as he slipped into the black and blue and embarked on a new venture, which began swimmingly with a volley in Bologna. Age was catching up to him and the niggling injuries disrupted the Belgian around mid-season. Still, he bounced back to finish on a high note, thundering one of the sweetest of his career in the Derby d'Italia. When Antonio Conte took over from Spalletti in the summer of 2019, the Lecce native wasn't as keen and loaned him out to Cagliari who loosened their grip on Nicolo Barella. 
It was a bittersweet homecoming, as injuries continued to plague his year in Sardinia. But wearing the armband on 18 occasions, and named league MVP in November, he'd rekindled the fire with the club where he made his mark, half a decade on. A final year of Calcio was divided between the San Siro and the Sardinia Arena, with his ultimate goal coming in March of 2021 for Gli Isolani to bookend his 15-year Italian tenure. Twelve months back in his hometown with Royal Antwerp ended sourly, getting arrested for driving with an expired license, and then mid-game smoking an e-cigarette to trigger a suspension. De Rossi's spal gave him a five-month contract, by the end of which the side were relegated and there was no renewal. Since last November, Nangolin has been on a quest to discover more about his Indonesian heritage, joining Bayangkara of Liga 1 in what is surely the closing chapter of his career. Raja Nangolan. One of the sport's last alpha males, Raja Nangolan is a breed of baller we don't seem to get these days. The chain-smoking, alcohol-drinking, party animal was not a subscriber to the philosophy of absolute discipline, preferring to instead live life to the fullest and still do his job. Prime Nangolan was a cocktail of artiste and pitbull, not only comfortable, but dominant as either a 6, 8 or 10. Il Ninja was the right manager's dream, so it's ironic that the reason one of his generation's most versatile midfielders never experienced a World Cup was because he couldn't fit a system. It's understandable, I guess, for a coach to not select an outspoken troublemaker who smokes enough to demand a room with a balcony on away days. But when they're as good as Nangolan, isn't it worth the hassle? <laughs>